Hi, second allotment tour today. It is the 7th of June and we've had a couple of rains this week so there's been a quite a big pop in the garden this week. Uh, a lot of the plants have finally sprung up and started to do stuff. So I'm going to walk you around and show you what's going on and hopefully make it a bit quicker this time. So here's the front. Um, first off what's going on is, we'll start on this side, the peas have started. So actually we're harvesting loads of Mange 2, the Shiraz Purple Mange 2, and there's some delicate um, sugar snap pea that are almost ready. They're just on the edge of coming. Um, and behind that are our main crop variety, which is Hearst Green Shaft. And we're starting to pick these. We never actually cook with them. We play this game where we pop them, well, we try to guess how many's inside and then just eat them right then, whoever is the winner. So they're coming, which is really exciting. It's really hard to get in there, man. I netted this thing beyond, which keeps the pigeons out. You can see where there's pigeon damage at the top. They kind of sit on the top and they just kind of nibble on the top leaves. So that's why the net are there. Um, but then the pea tendrils kind of cling around it and it's actually really hard to get in, to pull it away, to get under, to harvest them. Live and learn. Um, in the cabbage bed, things are starting to hard up a little bit. Um, they're getting there. There's a few different varieties in here. I can't tell you which one's which. They're mostly cone-headed cabbages. Um, they're, they're getting there. They're getting there. I had a bit of... I don't think it's um, caterpillar damage. I didn't see any eggs or worms or anything, but um, I had some holes on this one, so I just dusted it with DT, DE, just um, is really sharp, diatomaceous earth. It's food grade, it's organic, um, but it cuts their little bellies when they go on it, so they don't like to. So I've done that to prevent them. And then I have the, um, what is that one? Drumhead Red? I think the name is, the red cabbages, they ball up into a ball cabbage. They're not anywhere near yet. And those are some cauliflowers over there, but not quite yet. Behind here, I have the cosmos, which are getting bigger. Sage, rosemary, the whole time, um, herb bed is doing really well. I just kind of mutilated that thing, gave my neighbor some. Really hard to get apart but he was grateful. Um, I planted some flowers over here not sure what they're called but they're really perking up and most of my lavender my new hedge is made it except for this guy. No idea why but he is struggling. Okay. I'm not sure why that is sometimes you know it's all the exact same conditions. It's me growing it. I water them all the same. It looks like the lighting's just about the same, though I might get a bit more shade. But for some reason, sometimes just one of your plants will just die. It's no big deal. Just plant more. And if you can, have a backup that you can throw in when it croaks, and then you can just throw that one in. I think gardening, more than anything, isn't necessarily talent. It's persistence. Just keep going, and eventually something will happen and you get some food from it. Every year something fails, but if you plant a variety, you always have something to eat. Next up is the onion bed. I planted out, they're so tiny, these little babies, which are Lilia. They're like a red um, spring onion that can bulb up, and I just did them, I ran in a room, so I just did them all around the corner. You can see where I watered. That's all Lilia. Um, the actual onions themselves, there's two different varieties in here. Um, golden bear and a mammoth onion and they all got mixed up when I was doing them but they are starting to bulb up a bit. That one's looking really nice. My first year growing from seed so this is quite exciting and usually when I grow from sets they're harvested right about now but I had such a bad harvest last year I really wanted to give it a bit more chance to try something different and so far so good. Um, yeah, here's the leeks and they're getting there. Wanted to get them a bit bigger before I plant them out. 
I have some spinach here. It's already going to seed, but I mean, this is about the end of the season for spinach. It gets too hot and too sunny for them. It's really a cool loving crop. So what I do have, I'm going to leave it in for another couple of weeks. I have some over there too. And then I'm just going to harvest it all and take it out. Spring onions doing well, all different sizes because I successional sow. I've been harvesting those. Swiss chard, no idea why I plant so many. They're really pretty. I don't love it. It's a good backup green if there's nothing else available. Um, and if you saw my earlier video this week, you'll see that I planted some Cape gooseberries in where the shallots used to be, and they are taking really well. One died, slug got to it, but the other one's okay. And this is the perpetual spinach. It's doing fine. Then on the other side of that is, see if I can peek in. These are my winter brassicas. So flower sprouts and purple sprouting broccoli. They are doing really well. Um, one of them was starting to keel over. So I put some spokes in and tied it in so that it'll have something to lean on and keep it upright. That happens every year with these because they're so heavy. Um, and they just need a little bit more support. So, so far so good. Outside of that, I'm just kind of tucking things in. There's some parsley I just put in there. Yeah, we like parsley. The bunnies love it, so it's always good to have lots. I have some other things here. I have some peas. Those are some sugar snap peas and some mange too, and they're doing really well. I mean, those are getting eaten by pigeons. I didn't net these. You can see where they're damaged a bit, but the other ones are fine. So fingers crossed. I have some turnips here. I dusted those because they have some flea beetle damage. That's again with the DE, the diatomaceous earth. So maybe it'll deter it. I've heard it's good for it, but it's my first year working with DE. So we'll see. And then behind that, I put in some more peas. I was growing them for um, salad shoots, but actually I found I wasn't really using them. And we love to eat peas, so I just planted them up. And they're growing. They're doing really well. More parsley here. Mint is doing well. Apples are growing. Can we see the apples? They're doing really well. We're starting to drop a bit. June drop. This one has a huge cluster there. This is our eating apple, a dessert one, and they're doing really well. So we'll see how many of those drop off. I'm sure we'll get a nice big harvest. On the other side here, I'll start working my way back. We have the dahlias, which are coming up nicely. That one's a bit slower, but it'll come. Gladiola getting taller. No flower shoots yet, but we'll, we'll see them soon. Little herb bed here. Lovely. Um, some flowers here. Still nothing showing. That's the didiscus. Um, but we do have the root. No, it's not Rubecchia. It's Echinacea, the purple cone flower. And it's starting to hard up and turn into flower heads. It's really nice. It self-seeds every year, and it's really good medicinal, the root, apparently. Though I don't usually use it for that. I just enjoy the flowers. My lupins back here are getting a little bit bigger, slowly. And the honeysuckle's doing all right. One more gratuitous shot of the rose bush. It's so pretty. This apple tree, the Bramley, it is a weird shape. I'm going to have to work more on pruning it next year. Make it a bit more pleasing to the eye. Um, really cut it back. It's doing well. It's always a little bit behind the dessert apple. It harvests and it crops at a different time of year. It's about a month later. So it's, it's about right on schedule. And it's doing what it always does, which is it has these little aphids that grow into the leaves. Let's see if they can help focus. I don't really do much to them. I just let them be because there's so many leaves on here and I can't actually reach them all that I don't really feel like it would be effective for me to waste my time with that. It's usually fine. 
What I have been working on today is really getting this asparagus bed in a little bit better shape. I've had quite a big infestation of asparagus beetle. Um, I mean, they're a beautiful beetle, but what they do is they lay eggs on the asparagus and then the grubs start to just kind of saw away all around the plants and then they turn brown and crispy. Now, I think more established plants would be okay with that, but because this is the first year that they have been in the ground, a infestation like this could really damage them and it could damage the crown and then that would be lost. And I don't want that to happen. So it's all today I've just been kind of going through and knocking all the beetles into a bowl of soapy water and then actually squeezing the grubs. Really fun. Just, yeah, getting rid of those guys and then spraying them with soapy water as well, hoping to catch them before the eggs hatch. So you can see as well that my asparagus is so thin because it's so new and floppy that I had to put some spokes in to help keep it up off the ground and kind of did just like this Florida weave where you wrap it in between two different strings and it helps to keep them up. So they're up off the ground, it's easier to weed through them, it's easier to check each individual asparagus fern to, for bug damage. And so far, so good. I think this bed is definitely the one where you're going to see the most change and difference from last week. The rain has really made a difference for these hot weather crops. The popcorn is really starting to get bigger. Um, there is a few that are smaller than others, but that's because I re-sowed seeds after that frost had killed a couple. So there's some baby ones, but actually they're not much different in size than some other ones. It's funny watching because all these in this section were all planted at the same time. And those ones in the back are definitely um, benefiting from more nutrients in the ground because they're much taller than the ones in front. It's interesting to watch. I guess there's just that little bit of a slight slope so the nutrients start to run down. On the other side of this are the squash which are starting to move and change. They're vining and they're starting to spread out so I am directing them through the corn so that they can provide a mulch for the corn and keeping the roots wet and damp at all times. Uh, eventually I will have to put some wire netting around to keep them in my plot and not rambling all over my neighbors which is just something happens when you grow a lot of these things and I always push the boundaries of how many I put in. The new plantings of the ones on the side are doing really well. You can barely tell that they were planted at a different time. I lost one more today. I think in the wind it kind of snapped the stem must have got a gust underneath of it. So I put in a couple I had extra because it is the Galio de... I don't know, it's a French variety. Galio de Ine. And I took French. How sad is that one? I'll show you. Galio de Cine. It's um, a, kind of a neon pinkish orange color. Nice big size and it has a warty top. I'm really excited about that one. Um, the new planting of corn is doing well. Some of them didn't make it, but that's okay. Most of them did. And these ones on this side are really getting nice and big. They don't seem to suffer as much from being smaller in the front. A little bit. That one's definitely noticeably bigger than the others. It's winning. But the rest of them just seem to be around on the same same footing. Hmm. The beans are mostly up in the back. We had to re-sow a few of them once the frost hit. The boys that did that for me. And the ones in the front here are mostly through. I think that'll be enough. We have quite a few beans all scattered around. I'm gonna ignore the sorrel because it has gone to seed. Um, the lettuce and the spinach are just about to the end. It's starting to turn into little Christmas trees, which means it's going to send up a flower sp spike soon. I might just let it and then collect the seed because I don't have any more seeds for this variety and it's a really nice one. Um, same with the spinach. You can see, I actually think they're really pretty. Little star shape in the front. So I might leave a couple of plants to go to seed and then just tear the rest out over the next week. 
these radishes are going the same way. All these things are so short-lived, but they're really appreciated early in the season when there's not much else. And it's been feeding us for a couple of months, so I'm pretty happy with that. Next up is the cucumbers. They're starting to get a bit bigger. Lots of these were planted at different times. These are newer ones that I put in. And they're all different varieties. So some are obviously a lot bigger than others, but give them time. I actually sowed another round of cucumbers. I found that usually these ones start to end towards the end of August but we're cucumber lovers so if I put it in another crop um, it doesn't flower, um, give fruit for very long but when it does give fruit I'm really appreciative of it because the other ones had ended and if I am organized I might put it in a place where I could have a bit more heat like in one of these boxes so that it is a bit more protected going into the colder months or maybe even leave it in the greenhouse I'm not really sure we harvested our first zucchini today. They're really bulking up. They've grown so much this last week. I was I bought a multi-pack because I really like the yellow and the green together. I think they look really pretty on a plate. But for some reason, all the seeds were green ones. So that's all I got. What are you going to do? New cilantro. I like to put that in successionally as this one is just about finished and to be honest I need the room for the peppers which are getting a little bit bigger the one is struggling we'll see some of the cucamelon is doing well we had another cold snap this week and it doesn't love that but so far some of them are growing we'll see what happens we do really love them they're a bit more protected right here from the wind, so I'm hopeful that they will grow a bit more. They usually do. And down here is another rogue um, Cape Gooseberry. I might have to move you. More cilantro over here. It's cropping really well. So I have four different cilantro beds right now. This is the second one. It's doing really well. We're getting lots off of it. Basil's getting a bit bigger. It does not compare at all to the one in the greenhouse, as which is much, much bigger. But this one is doing good for outside. I'm hopeful. I do love it. I do love it. It's just the best tasting combination with um, tomatoes and mozzarella. Mm, I can almost taste it already. Not too much longer. The sweet potatoes are spreading out a bit. Yeah, I'm hopeful for these guys. I'm really excited. I can't wait to have our own sweet potatoes. A bit more than last year, which we only had a couple of tiny little finger ones. So, these are in a much better position with much more light and more warmth. So, I'm hopeful for them. Oh, so nice. Just look at these. Bringing the pollinators in and bringing me joy. The dill on the other side, we're doing really well with. I've been taking that home to the bunnies. Its main use will be with dill pickles, which I really love. And other than that, I don't really use dill, so I mainly grow it for the buns and for the pickles. One more cilantro back here. It's really perking up. And then we got the tomatoes, and they've grown loads. I went through and pruned them all yesterday and tied them up. So they're in a much better position, and there's some air around their feet, which is really nice. Most of the leaves are off the ground. They're starting to set some fruit and flowers. Where's that one? There's one that's really big. Well, big-ish. Not as big as it will be. Look at this one. Already. You go, man. So those are all the crimson crush on that side. And then these ones here are my cherry tomatoes, which are the idli, Ildi? 
I'm not sure I say that correctly. But they put off huge trusses of about 80 fruit or more. So look how many flowers are just on that first truss. Loads. Last year was my first year with the Ildi. Idli? I have to look at the label. Um, tomato. And it didn't do very well. It was a bit slower than other cherry tomatoes that I've grown in the past. And by the time it was starting to fruit, that's when the blight rolled in. So it mainly was a crop of green tomatoes last year. Um, I'm not sure I'll grow them again after this year. We'll see how they do this year. I've grown others that I've really loved and have done well and cropped earlier before the blight would hit. So we just have to kind of give them one more go. I still had the seed, so we'll just see what happens. The Roman tomatoes are perking up a little bit. Definitely this one. That one had a bit of a slower start, but I put some liquid feed from my comfrey onto it and it's burst up a bit more. It'll make it just fine. That's another one that um, it needs to, um, it needs a long season and it is blight susceptible. So we'll see what happens. I usually get quite a few. Fingers crossed we'll have a nice hot summer without much humidity and that'll keep the blight away. Potatoes. Yeah, man. I think next week I'm going to start checking them, looking underneath and see what's happening. They've already started to flower. And yeah, it's about that time of year. Pull up one plant and see what's going on. Those plants are still just sitting there. I need to do something with them. Here's my kale bed. I forgot to weed this one. <laughs> Please excuse. They're growing well. There's one hole. I could actually move one of the seedlings from there into that hole and it'd be fine. I just haven't done it yet. They're growing well. And they're really tasty and really lush. So I'm really enjoying them. Once those potatoes are out, I'll, the pl plans for those plants is to extend the bed so that it goes all the way till the end with more of the same. So it won't be long. More didiscus flowers I just put in there. Haven't done anything yet. This next bit is the most exciting bit. I can't believe how far these broccoli have come in the last week. By next week we'll be harvesting some. <laughs> Under the net we go. Look at these! How exciting is that? It looks like they'll all come right around the same time. <laughs> which is just one of those things. So they're all doing really well. Some of them are a bit further along than others, but most of them are right around the same time. This is the Iron Man variety, which I only halfway grew because of the name. But one of its claims to fame is that it will stand long in the garden, so it won't just go right into flower. As these are just big old flowers. If you leave these, they all turn into little yellow flowers. So we eat the flower of the broccoli. Though you can eat the leaves, they're just a bit tough. But bunnies love them. So they do stand for quite a while in that position before they turn into yellow flowers, the Iron Man. And then also, once you harvest the big head in the um, top, then it sends off lots of lovely side shoots, which will keep you going throughout the rest of the season, which is what I love about them. So I think it'll do really well already. I'm really excited. Nothing much for the cauliflower yet, but it's fine. Next up we have the green beans and purple beans, the climbing ones. Some of them are starting to climb. They're moving along. And then they still have a few gaps, which I've reseeded. This one's the winner. It's all the way up here. All the way to here. Well done you. Strawberries are coming. Not as many as I was hoping for, to be honest. I did see some birds and I don't net mine. And that's probably a mistake. So it's a bit late now for this year. Next year I'll have to do that in this position. I never had to in my last strawberry bed. They just left it alone. But I guess they found this one. 
The potatoes here are doing really well. I do have some brown spot on them, but I'm not worried about that. Um, it's fine. It's because I had to water it low down and got quite a few of the leaves wet, I guess. And also it did have some frost damage, so some of the damaged leaves you see is from that. But they look fine. It's not blight. I'm happy. Sunflowers are growing tall, as is the tree spinach. Doing really well. Clematis is pretty much done. It is, yeah, they're on their way out, but that's fine. It was a pleasant surprise to have them. What is starting to fruit is this loganberry bush, which I do need to tie in a bit more. So I picked the first couple berries off of this and the tay berries not too far away either. So yeah, see they're coming. They're still a little bit early. But they're coming along. And this is the tayberry, which has um, briars on it, prickles. You can tell the difference. They do have a different flavor, even though they're both hybrids of a mixture of blackberry and raspberry. They made their own kind of way with that one. <laughs> the dahlias are coming up slowly but surely. That one gets a lot of shade. I think that's why it's slower. That one's doing the best, but it should be really big. Some lettuce growing there, which is doing really well. It's just a mixed leaf lettuce. Doing well. And these are the next lot of radishes, which aren't quite ready yet. Actually, this. Oop, dropped it. This guy is a ladybug larva, and they're really helpful little guys. So this is the immature version of a ladybug. And what they do is they eat lots and lots and lots of aphids. So I'm gonna go put this guy where he'll be the most use. There you go. And you even have a little friend. I'm gonna focus. There you go. And you even have a little friend and lots of lovely things to eat. That's some black fry on my willow, which I just leave because it's willow. Be lovely. Flowers are doing well and being really pretty. There's one marigold there with a grasshopper on it. And some daisies and those things I don't know the name of. And this cool little guy, look at this guy. It's kind of fun having flowers on the allotment this year. Spencer's plot's doing really well. The beans are growing much better than mine. We put his cucumber in. It's doing really well. His little strawberries, which honestly aren't going to do wonderfully this year, but there are a couple of berries on it. It'll be better my next year. His peas are getting really tall, and he has a full line of carrots, which is much better than mine. He's a natural, that boy. Pear tree is doing well, getting lots of pears, they'll soon be dropping, but right now it is loaded down and doing lovely. On this side of the compost bed I have a few more bulbs that I put in, um, some sword lilies and a peony, which are all coming up nicely, even though we stepped on one, it's doing fine. The beetroot, I have three different kinds of beetroot in there and they're all doing well. And my whole line of parsnips is doing really well too. So everything is flourishing here. Middling so in the carrot bed. I still have some holes and gaps, though I do have some babies coming up there and other ones that are bigger. I'm just not a natural carrot grower. I try my best. It's doing, it's doing enough. We'll have some. Plus we have Spencer's, which is a big relief. <laughs> so here's the blueberries. They all crop at different times of year. I got this three pack. So one that crops in July, one that was for August and one for September. So they'll keep going throughout the summer. And then I also had three 
larger plants, one that was already here on the plot when I took it on, and two others that I bought that were three-year-old plants as opposed to two. And yeah, another month I think and we'll start eating berries off these things again. And usually we start with this one. It's doing really well and starting to get some blush on the berries. Now one of the most improved awards goes to the raspberries, which have been such a slow start this year. I'm not sure whether that's because it's dry or just the plants getting old, but they have taken their time. But they are starting to really come up. So we're keeping on top of the weeding of the bindweed and slowly but surely the plants are mostly coming up except for a couple of they're um mostly not all of them because we do have these guys which are nothing but most of them are about waist height on me now and doing really well oh there's lots of bugs out tonight i don't know what this guy is he's some kind of fly look at those huge eyes on that thing Whoa. The red current is doing well. It is huge and it has so many berries on it. Look at all those. It's a bit earlier than it normally is. Usually mine fruits later than Mike's, my neighbors. We just compare with each other, don't we? But his is a bit behind mine this year. Flukes. The rhubarb I haven't been picking very much just because it had been so dry that it was starting to really suffer. So we had a rain this week so I might harvest some tonight and take it home and make some lovely things with it. We'll see. Black currant is starting to fruit and flower. It's not my favorite because well, actually, that does look a bit more like a truss this time. Usually just one berry each comes. And while they're because they're not my favorite berries, sometimes I feel like it's just not worth all the time and effort of picking them. And usually it comes when I'm really busy. So it's an underutilized bush. What are you going to do? And then we have the blackberry, the thornless blackberry. Now this has been alive tonight. All the flowers are open, they're starting to form berries, and the bees have been loving it. There's just a nice steady drone of the bees pollinating all these flowers, and it just looks so pretty. And last but certainly not least is the greenhouse. So I have some the new cucumbers I've just sowed and they're their market nor cukes which is another new variety they're starting to come up everything comes up so much quicker when it's warm these are some more peppers i was hoping to get in but they're just taking a bit of time the chili peppers are growing really well actually i need to prune those just pinch out the top so that the other leaves will grow and then it'll go a bit bushier This one's already done. It was a gift from a neighbor, so I think he did it already. And it is starting to get flowers on it. Come on, focus. So, soon though, fruit. Basil is huge and doing well. I pruned that a couple of weeks ago, so I'm going to harvest some today, I think as I bought some pine nuts at the shop, so I'm ready to make some pesto. It is looking good. And I have the next lot of basil growing there, so I'm going to sow it up in individual pots quite soon and be ready to get those plants in the ground. Probably outside again, because this is probably about the max I can have in here. Or maybe I'll just take it home. I haven't decided. 
And then, big reveal, we come to the melons. Are you ready for this? Oh my god. What was I thinking? Putting six plants in a tiny greenhouse. This is early, there's not even any fruit yet, and it is overtaking one entire side. It is happy, so happy, and doing so well. So yeah, I'm so excited for these guys. I hope it works, I hope we get some melons. They're mostly male flowers yet, but there are loads of them. I saw one female flower today. Where did that go? I'm not sure. It was ages ago. But fingers crossed we get some. We really love melon. It'd be lovely to eat our own. <laughs> that's the end another garden tour second one this season thank you for coming along with me and for checking out the garden and noticing the progress um, i hope you have a great week and i'll see you again next week for another garden tour